All right, Coach, um, obviously you guys have a nice little home stretch here with three games in a row. It starts Thursday night with Omaha. If you look at the Summit League standings, a big game. What are some of the things that you're stressing as you get ready to face the Mavericks at home? Well, I mean, every league game is a challenge. There's so much parity in our league. It seems like every year, but uh, but this year in particular. And, and uh, Omaha is playing great basketball right now. Um, you know, it's going to be your your typical Omaha Omaha Fort Wayne basketball game. And the fact that you know we both are are in the top 20 in the country in scoring. Um, you know, rarely have our games ever been outside of the 80s, 90s, sometimes even the hundreds. And uh, more often than not, it ends up in an overtime game. Um, so it's going to be a great game. And, and Omaha Omaha is playing at a high high level right now um they have they have five guys that are all in double figures it's not a team where you can identify okay let's keep you know their point guard and their five man inefficient you got a great chance to win the game you know they they got five different options that can all just flat out score it um so you know we we gotta we gotta one we gotta be able to score the ball you're not going to be you know beating omaha playing in the 60s and 70s um but uh but two it's about great offensive process because if you if you take difficult shots in crowds or, or you turn the ball over, make immature plays, that set that ignites their, their offensive transition game and they're very, very good in that. So a great offensive process is key and then you know they, they really smash the glass. Their center is averaging four point five offensive rebounds a game. We gotta keep them off the glass. And then at the end of the day, they're, they're number f- top fifteen in the country in three point shooting. So we gotta have an urgency and defend the arc. Um, and that's something that we've you know, until the other night against Western, we've we've done a much better better job and we've been the top two in our league in defending the arc um, in a league that's it's the top league in the country in uh, three-point shooting so you know we, we we've done a good job there but we got to get back to that when you take a look at John Conchar you're talking about 15 points away from passing Frank Gaines uh, for the all-time leading scorer in the history of this program where have you seen John make those strides and what does it mean to see him eventually break that record and pass Frank to be number one well, I mean, he made great strides in that red shirt year five years ago, mm-hmm. um, where he added, you know, close to 50 pounds of muscle. Um, you know, he's just been Mr. Consistency over his career with us. I mean, you know, you can count on him every single game, you know, to, to, to be challenging for a double double. Um, and, uh, you know, he's one of the most efficient players to have played college basketball in the last 20 years. And when you have someone like that, I mean, they're, they're going to rack up numbers and, uh, you know, it's, it's, pretty special to me that that you know both Frank Gaines and John Conchar I've I've had the privilege and and, and you know the experience of coaching both of them um, you know that's two really really good players and uh, you know I'm I'm excited for uh, I'm excited for John um, you know it's 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 going to be a great honor and uh, you know I think uh, Frank's been a great follower of, of uh, our program since he's graduated still playing overseas talk to him regularly and you know he's really proud of the growth our program's had and he feels a part of every bit of it and you know I think he's excited for John as well. When you take a look at, at the guys he's played with, uh, Max Landis, Mo Evans, Bryson Scott, John's role has been different, it seems like, every year in what is being asked of him. This year he's, he's bringing the ball up a little bit more. How have you seen him really adapt to the role and you know, the team develop around him, but him also develop to what the team needs? I mean, he's been awesome at that. He's he's literally a chameleon on the floor. I mean, there's not a part of the game that he can't do. I mean, he's played every position over his career for us other than the five. Uh, and and I'm not sure he couldn't play that as well. I mean, as a soft, you know, as a freshman, he started at the uh, small forward. As a as a sophomore, he started at the at the power forward. Um, and then the last two years, you know, he's played the point for us. And uh, you know, we like having the ball in his hands. Um, you know, he's he's been a facilitator, and he still is a facilitator. But he's been a a great facilitator to Bryce and to Mo, to to Brent Calhoun, to Max Landis. You know, where he's always making whether it's an assist or a hockey assist. Assist. And you know, the last two years, he's led our league in assists. But this year, you know, we needed a a, a dominant score, and you know, both he and Kaysen have taken that on. Have been really, really efficient scoring the basketball. And what we've seen from John is the ability to take over a game. And uh, I, I've loved that growth with him. His usage rate is up, and and you know, the ability down the stretch, like he wants the ball in his hands and he wants to go make a play. And 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 I love that. And I think you know, he's made huge, huge growth this year and over his entire career. Perfect. Anything else you'd like to add, Coach? Go Dons.